All right. Um, why don't we begin and we'll have some other announcements and greetings following the worship service. Um, if you have prayers to add for the prayers for the church, um, please put those in the uh, chat. And yes, before the end of the sermon. Um, and uh, the note about the dismissal is that 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 was just a note for the person leading it that Joel will dismiss us after the hymn and not before the hymn. We hate to be gone before the hymn is sung. Okay. <laughs> dismiss the troops all leave and there's no one to raise the flag or whatever you say. Okay, anyway. Okay, so um, welcome to our Zoom service on Sunday, June 13th, the third Sunday after Pentecost. And wish to acknowledge the land. We acknowledge that the land on which we reside here in Minnesota, where we worship and gather, was first the home of the Dakota and Ojibwe Chippewa people. Minnesota means sky-tinted water in the Dakota language. So we honor the First Nation people who continue to live and work here as part of this community. And so we invite you to hear as our prelude, there in God's garden, uh, a setting by Ann Krentz organ, with Paul Tofnes on clarinet and Diana Rankin on piano. And please mute. Pastor Joan, are you on, on Zoom at this point? Hello, Joanne. Okay. So the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. 
We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let us sing the hymn, Almighty God, Your Word is Cast, number 516. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Hope to sing the Kyrie.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth that we may bear your truth and love to those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So let us hear God's word. The first reading is Ezekiel 17. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a spring from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain, on the mountain height of Israel. I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit, and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live in the shade of its branches and rest and nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I will bring low the high tree. I will make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read antiphonally the words of Psalm 92, in which we sing of thankfulness and praise to God with the psaltery and the lyre and the harp and in a orchard of fruit trees. The men will read, the low voices will read the even odd numbered verses and high voices, the even numbered verses. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. On the psaltery and on the lyre and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the work of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent. That they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no injustice. It's on me, Pastor? Okay. Um, second reading is Second Corinthians 5, or chapter 5, verse 6 through 17, um, chapter 6. So we are always confident, even though we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by, seven, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Eight, yes, we do have, com have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body at, at home with, and at home with the Lord. Nine, so whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. 10, for all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. 11, therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God. And I hope that we are are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer to those, to answer those who boast in the outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are besides ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for us all and therefore all have died. And he died for all 
so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. 16, now, no, from now on, therefore we regard with no one from human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. 17, so if anyone is in Christ, therefore is a, is a new creature, creation, and everything old has passed away. See, everything has become anew. A word from the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, and once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in the shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them. To his disciples, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, if you haven't heard, now we're well into the summer season. Even though it is technically spring for another week, with the summer solstice being June 20th. But the weather has been unseasonably hot, as you know, if you live in Minnesota, which has driven us indoors and not into our church sanctuary for another Sunday at home on Zoom. It's not COVID this time, but a heat wave keeping us physically apart. So we'll take this day by day, week by week, see when we can gather. Although I am pleased to report that outdoor activities are underway for more, most Minnesotas, Minnesotans are able to get outside in the evenings, usually when it cools off or in the morning. I have been at two graduation celebrations this weekend held outside for Mike Sprung and for Joanne's grandson, Phoenix, which were joyful and outside, held outside in the breeze. Many of you have been outside tending your gardens or lawns, or for a walk in the park, or a day by a lake in Minnesota. We are being blessed, even though the temperature has been on the unbearable side most afternoons, and we sure need rain. Keep that in your prayers, all right? So for all of you who are enjoying the flowers bloom and your gardens grow, I have a question. Do you know how your gardens grow? I think there are poems and songs about this. And I know there is a scientific observation about putting the seed in the ground, preferably in fertile soil, good black dirt, water it daily and let the sun do its work. With good seed and soil, 
rainfall and sunshine, your seeds will grow into healthy plants, blooming flowers of many colors, bearing fruits and producing vegetables and grains. That's the idea anyway, all starting from a seed, dirt, warmth and sunlight in a life-giving process called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. It's a hard word to pronounce. Do all these things right and what can go wrong? Well, plenty. Because you know, it's much more complicated than this, just like life. Even when you do all the right preparation of the soil, plant the seeds at the right time, you think, water them daily or twice daily in hot weather, remove pests and weed your garden, sometimes those seeds still don't grow. For a lot of bad things can happen, sometimes overnight. Like there may be too much rain and seeds or seedlings are washed away, or it's too cold, not a problem this year, and the seeds don't germinate. Or it's too hot and the seedlings dry up and wither away. I've seen that with our cucumbers in the backyard. So we do things as humans to help the process along, we think. Well, like irrigation or adding fertilizer, some use pesticides, though this is not a preferred option in the long run. My wife, Kim, is known to have a green thumb, even without gloves. But do you want to know her secret? It's not miracle girl. While she does all the things advisable to do, like watering her plants daily faithfully, Kim talks to her plants as she plants them in the ground. She'll grow seedlings indoors, and then when the time is right, she takes them outside to plant, digging a hole, placing them in the dirt and adding topsoil and water as she does. And all the while she gives each single plant a blessing, encouraging it and asking it to grow healthy and strong to feed the family. So she says this in the Khmer language. I think that's the secret. As she observed her aunt do in Cambo back in Cambodia when she was a little girl. So that's your secret. Talk to your plants saying good things while you plant them in Cambodian. Or maybe it'll work in your own language. I just don't know, but you can try it. Seriously though, in the gospel, we hear how, how you and I may plant the seeds, but God gives the growth. And though we have our observations about this <clears throat> and have learned some things to make it work, we really don't know how God has done this. So in today's gospel, we heard one metaphor by which Jesus describes the kingdom of God, like a sower scattering seeds. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself. First the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. Well, farming and gardening today is in many ways done as it always has been done, regardless of the heavy machinery and scientific methods, fertilizers or hybrid miracle seeds. So much of it is out of your control. You can plant seeds and nothing grows. Or too much rain or not enough rain. It's all out of a farmer's hands. You can have perfect weather or storms can wash away your whole crop. So maybe farming and to a lesser extent gardening is one of the greatest acts of faith you can do. Because once that seed is in the ground, you are at the mercy of the elements and the weather, or at least the plant is. So you pray and have hope. And if it all fails, <laughs> you do it again the next year. It's like a lot of things in life, like your health, or events that happen to you that are not in your or my control. Often we just have to deal with them. But when your gardens grow or your fields bear fruit or life goes well for you, it's even more miraculous than this. Jesus also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? It's like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest, tiniest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it's sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all clubs, puts forth large branches so that the bird of the air can make nests in its shade. 
and I think there's still another way to look at this, when if you see the sprouting of a seed, the growth of a fertilized egg into a human, and then a child who grows into an adult human being, both as great miracles of transformation and change, which we can call, which we call growth. Growth is really change. And we don't make growth happen. It may be programmed into our DNA and we can help it along with nutrition, good parenting and education, but mostly it's a miracle, a gift from God. I know, I've been watching my grandchildren grow from birth in the past year and a half. And despite the pandemic, they have grown and it's awesome to watch their daily transformation. We mainly help the growth along. And this is not only literal growth, as we see young persons grow into mature adults. It happens in the growth of wisdom and faith, which also can transform a person if given the right conditions and care. So here's my leap. So the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone in, is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. This is not only about you and me or about the changes within ourselves when we follow Jesus. This is also maybe even more strikingly about how we view others, not with stereotypes or prejudices, but with new eyes as children of God. And I know that can really be a challenge it's also a transformation, another kind of growth. Remember these, those plastic transformer toys that children used to get as presents? I don't know how popular they are now, but I know when our children were growing up, transformers were really popular for kids who like to build things with their hands. A transformer could be turned into a car or a robot or a bug just by adding parts or twisting the present parts into new forms. Voila, what was once a bug was now a robot. Transformation, I wish I had one to show you right now in my hands, but I have more plants than transformers. But transformation can happen to human beings also who are transformed by faith. So isn't that why we have worshiped together as an assembly as we praise God, read these lessons from scripture and apply them to our lives? It can happen kind of like seeds growing into plants. A child is planted in the world by God, let's say, and the child grows with good soil, in a healthy environment, with prayer, with good nutrition, education, parenting, and positive values from a supportive village, a child is transformed and grows into a person of faith at any age. The transformation can take place over a lifetime. So please be open to continued challenge, growth, and transformation, my sisters and brothers in the church. We can see this transformation in our children into young adults in the congregation. This past weekend, I have been privileged to be invited to two high school graduation parties for two of our young men. Mike Sprung has graduated from high school and is now preparing to attend college. You and I have watched him grow from a newborn baby, some of us, into an active child and then a teenager through confirmation, exploring questions of faith, and now an active, inquisitive, strong young man with a lot of faith and hope in the future. Transformation and growth right in front of us. I know there will be more transformation in the years ahead to come at college in Ohio and beyond. Thanks be to God for the growth. Then yesterday, I attended a celebration for Phoenix, the son of Sean Sherman, grandson of Pastor Joan Conroy. Phoenix was also confirmed at Redeemer just a few years ago. Phoenix's celebration included a naming celebration yesterday, which is a tradition of the Lakota people and native tribes around the country. In the ceremony, Lakota prayer songs were sung by an elder and his grandfather, Gerald Sherman, reminded him of how he was connected to the earth to the sky, to the water, and to plants and animals. We are all part of the earth and are thankful to the creator for all that nurtures us and the people who surround us with love. And then his grandfather revealed his new name, which I cannot pronounce, given by the spirits 
and another prayer song was sung. It was a ceremony celebrating this holy transformation of a young man in the Lakota tradition which seems to me similar to the values of faith that come in a confirmation ceremony, but with the unique traditions and perspective of his native tradition of wisdom and spirituality. So he is already transformed, but now we recognize it along with a new name that is connected to the, his original name, Phoenix, of a bird, mythical bird rising out of the ashes into the air, and his new name is connected with an eagle rising up. We'll have to ask Joanne to say the name next time we see her. Churches are also undergoing great transformations these days, along with all of us people of faith, though not always because we want to or planned it. Just like seeds planted in the ground, where we are in these times and places with all the events happening these days, social unrest and upheaval, changing technologies as well as cultures. As we grow and go through life, we are being transformed. We don't know in what shape and form we will be in after this global pandemic eases, and we aren't done with it yet. Though most of us have been vaccinated against COVID-19, we're on the right track. We don't know the results, however, for the church in the whole world. But we do know this, we are human seeds planted in the ground of the earth, connected to the earth, the environment and each other, called and named in our baptism into Christ, nurtured by our village, the church, growing in faith, hope, and love by gathering in worship, hearing God's word, and the good news of Jesus Christ, nurtured by the sacraments of bread and wine. We have all been transformed already by faith and this word and his word and sacrament by the community of the church. And so we now are new creations in Christ, but we're still unfinished. We're not finished yet. We don't know what you and I will turn out to be because our transformation is still going on, but we have faith and we have Jesus to follow as our guide. So let's go into the future with faith, hope, and love for each other as Jesus has for us. So I repeat the prayer of the day. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth that we may hear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Please join us in confessing our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, what was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us unite before God in prayer, and we respond to each petition with the words, Grant us your life. Holy God, fount of blessings, we pray for the church, that the seeds of faith which you plant take root and grow, that those churches that are emerging from the pandemic regather their members in safety, and that you bless the church in Ethiopia and other places that are experiencing great distress. Hear our prayers, O giver of all goodness, grant us your life. We pray for the earth, that trees and plantings in national forests be protected, that farms around the globe be safeguarded from drought, flood, and pestilence and that wild animals thrive in the habitat they require. Hear our prayers, O giver of all goodness, grant us your life. We pray for the nations, that world leaders may care for those in greatest needs, that all prejudices cease, that the might of tyrants be halted, that journalists be kept safe from harassment, that the displaced find a welcome homeland, and that peace reign between nations. Hear our prayers, O giver of all goodness, grant us your life. We pray for the aged, that they be embraced by their relatives and friends, and that their many needs be met. And we pray for the children, that they be protected from harm and danger, and that this summertime give them opportunity to enjoy nature's bounty. And we pray especially for our emerging young adults, Michael and Phoenix, that their ways be guided by you, and they become the people you created them to be. Hear our prayers, O giver of all goodness, grant us your life. We pray for health and wholeness, for countries where COVID-19 is accelerating and vaccines are not available, for relief agencies that the hungry be fed, for those who are beaten down by poverty and homelessness for those who are suffering from climate disasters, for all who are sick, especially those with no access to medical care, and for those we name here before you, Jane, Bob, Emmanuel, Nathaniel, Jill, Colleen, Mary Lou, Maylee, Lucy, and those we lift up to you in our hearts. Hear our prayers, O giver of all goodness, grant us your life. We pray finally for ourselves that you give us the grace to welcome anything new that comes from you, and in your mercy you receive our private petitions. Hear our prayers, O giver of all goodness, grant us your life. For all who have died in the faith, 
for those whom we remember here before you, we offer our thanks, gracious Redeemer. For all who will die today, we ask your mercy. And at the end that we join with all your people in the perfection of your presence, we pray. Hear our prayers, O giver of all goodness. Grant us your life. To you we pray, O God, our source, our sovereign and strength, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. Be share the peace of the Lord. Peace, everybody. Peace, peace to all. all. Uh, yeah. peace. peace to all. Island, Lena. The peace of Christ to you. Let's peace to all. The peace of Christ to everyone. Amen. Peace. Amen. So now we will be treated to an intermezzo played by Eliana Thorne on cello and Molly Rabin on piano.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send now your spirit upon us and this meal as grains scattered on the hillside become one bread. So let your church be gathered into the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty father with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We believe that that body and blood of Jesus Christ are truly present in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. So all are welcome to receive the sacrament here at our Lord's table and in your homes. So Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come and let us sing the Lamb of God. body of Christ, given for you, take and eat. <coughs> the blood of Christ, shed for you, take and drink.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Now the blessing of God who provides for us, who feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. We sing in these gladness. in peace you are the body of christ thanks be to god thank you